Chapter 20, Vehicle Extrication and Special Rescue. All right, special rescue situations include water rescue, diving problems, ice rescue, confined spaces, farm emergencies, and bus collisions. Always remember you need to maintain your own personal safety. Extrication. Rescue should wear protective equipment similar to firefighters' gear. In other words, a thick, heavy-duty coat, pants, boots, helmet, face shield, and definitely gloves. Remember, there's all those things like glass, metal with sharp edges, fuel, battery acids, things like that, corrosive stuff all over. Okay, you need to know your limitations of your training and equipment and obviously your skills. The longer you've been doing it, the more you know how to do. Identify any possible hazards, like I've been mentioned already, maybe electrical cables, unstable vehicles, fires, fuel, battery acid, things like that. We need to control these hazards. Okay, sometimes you might need to get help to control those hazards. You know, the right equipment and things. You need to gain access to the patients and provide patient care and stabilisation. Move the patients only if your life and their life is in danger. As an emergency medical responder, you have two primary extrication goals of staying uh, a stray, safe access to patients and ensure the stabilisation of the patient. All right, step one, scene overview. You must remember that once you arrive on the scene, do a walkthrough, establish what type of injuries there might be from um, what type of um, fish, what the vehicles look like, things like that. Okay, check for hazardous substances. Please report any hazardous substance or dangers to medical so emergency services. As you approach the scene before you exit your vehicle, get an overview. Rapidly determine the extent of the accident. Uh, estimate, try and estimate the number of patients, locate the hazards, call for assistance. Let's remember there's always a chance for that there may be other vehicle crashes with soft tissue injuries and active bleeding, there may be infectious diseases. If there's sharp glass, metal present, wear heavy duty gaps or over your latex gloves. If there's any danger of splattering blood, consider face protection as well. Traffic hazards. Park your vehicle so that it protects the scene and warns oncoming traffic. So if you park your vehicle, the warning lights are the best advantage. Okay, wear appropriate safety vests and other personal protective equipment. Okay, if you have flares or fuses, you can always ignite them, set up traffic cones with torches and flashing lights. Okay, survey for hazards, obviously. Bystanders, keep bystanders away from the crash scene by giving specific directions. Use a rope or police or fire barrier tape to um, establish cornered off areas or off limit areas. Where there's a fuel spill, you are always expect to find a fuel spill where you find a motor vehicle accident, either on, on or near to where it is, the vehicle's upside down. All sorts of things are running out. Make sure the engine is turned off if it's still running. Stabilization of scenes and hazards. If the fuel is finished, run. if the fuel is spilled, call the fire department. If patients are in the motor vehicle with fuel, fuel spill and fire department is not arrived, consider covering the fuel with dirt. Okay. Motor vehicle, obviously, I just said turn off the ignition. Do not attempt to disconnect battery wires unless you've been trained to do so. Uh, because remember, nowadays we have electric vehicles as well. So they have multiple high voltage batteries. You've got to keep that in mind. Short circuits and other hazards like fuel and things like that. Electricity wires may be down due to high winds or ice or hitting a utility pole. Okay, locate the wires, but avoid contact with them. Mark them if you need be. Make a paint a picture in your mind where they should be. The vehicle is down the wire across it. Passengers are trapped inside. Instruct them to stay inside the car. 
Call the utility company and the fire company department for assistance. Unstable vehicles. Assume every vehicle involved is unstable unless you've stabilized it. Okay. Ensure stability by choking the front and back wheel. Gain access to the vehicle and place the transmission in park or set the handbrake up. It was deflate the tires, puncture them quickly, or cut the valve stems. The vehicle on the side or upside down, do not climb on the vehicle. Break the rear window of the glass and enter through the back of the vehicle. The primary hazard on the upside down vehicle is um, spilled fuel. Okay, vehicle fires. Impact fires occur when the gas tank ruptures during a crash. Post impact fires are often caused by electrical short circuits that can be prevented by turning the ignition off. And I said that earlier, avoiding the Hazards, emergency action, fire vehicles, use a dry powder, dry chemical powder ex fire extinguisher, the one of the blue label. Okay, use the fire extinguisher to keep the flames out of the passenger compartment. Remember, if you're using a dry chemical power fire extinguisher, always provide some sort of alternative ventilation or um, air or something for the for the patient to use. Cover their mouths and their faces at least for a while. Okay, uh, do not be overly worried about discharging fire extinguishing to passengers or to passengers. Immediately have someone else gather fire extinguishers from vehicles. Remove patients as quickly as possible. Everyone should move at least 50 foot away from the vehicle. Okay, so about 15 meters, 16 meters. Okay, stay away from the front and the rear ends of burning vehicles. Access to the doors. First of all, try all doors. Ensure that the locking mechanism is released. Try outside, inside handles at the same time. Do not try to break and enter through a windshield because it's made of plastic laminated glass. Side and rear windows are made out of tempered glass and will break easily. Okay, access to windows. Carry a spring-loaded center punch or life support kit. If you must break a window, try and break the one furthest away from the patient. Right. Access to windows. When you gain access to a cash vehicle, be alert for undeployed airbags. If you cannot gain access to a vehicle, stabilize it and protect the scene until proper help arrives. Okay. Conduct your primary assessment, obviously, HHHCAB, circulation airway, breathing. Okay. If there's any sort of hemorrhage, massive uh, arterial bleeds, things like that, always control bleeding first. Eh? Always remember that once you've done your primary survey, primary assessment, secondary assessment can be carried out in the vehicle if the patient is stuck there. Um, do your secondary assessment, head to toe inspection as much as possible, um, sample and dots and then definitely treat for shock. Stabilize the cervical spine if you at all expect there to be any sort of injuries and provide emotional support, maintain patient's body temperature, blankets, space blankets, things like that. Emergency care, all right. Leave patients in the vehicle unless the vehicle is on fire and the patients are otherwise in, 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 in immediate danger. Okay. All those for airway management, huh? airway breathing, circulation, ABCs. This extrication, disentanglement of a patient requires tools and specialized equipment in some serious extrication situations. Disentanglement could take up to 30 minutes and requires advanced training. Usually the jaws of life and things like that to extricate the patient. Golden hour or golden period, less time you spend at the scene with a serious measure, the better. Okay, the patient's chance of survival increases if rescuers can get the patient to definitive medical care as soon as possible and the appropriate uh, um, center would be advisable. 
Okay, as decision Engelman proceeds, dressing, bandages, and splints are applied, and the patient's head and spine are stabilized. The accessories used to care for the patient may not be adequate for extra, as an extrication route. Extrication route must be large enough to permit safe removal of the package patient. Once the pack, patient is packaged, he or she can be removed from the vehicle and placed onto a stretcher. Although EMR are directly involved only in the first four steps of extrication, you should be aware of the entire operation. Sometimes we might need to call for additional resources and extrication help, specify numbers and types of vehicles involved. Do not stand idly while waiting for help. Identify and contain hazards, park your vehicle appropriately, clear the working area around the cash route and use your head. Obviously, care for your patients as well. Most importantly, try opening the doors rather than breaking windows. Once you gain access to patients, assess and monitor their conditions. Above all, remain calm. That's probably the best advice you could get. Um, water and ice rescue. Um, use any readily made available object readily. Yeah. If a person is close to the shore, a branch pole or paddle may be long enough. Throw uh, at a swimming pool, dock, or supervised beach. A flotation device may be available. Throw the life buoy if one is available. Okay, some safety, public safety departments carry rescue throw bag, which contains a rope. If these devices are not available, improvise. Rope, uh, row, you can always row out to a drowning patient with a small canoe or boat. Okay, wear approved personal flotation device, obviously PPE protection, personal protection. Eh? Um, and only go as a last resort. Many swimmers have thought they were good enough to go and um, rescue a person that was drowning. I need to find themselves in trouble when the drowning victim starts to drown the rescuer. Okay, I've seen it many times before. Remove encumbering clothing before entering water. Or let's take a flotation device. If not for the victim to hang on to, for you to hang on to in case you get tired while going out. There's some things. Reach, throw row or go okay initial treatment of a person in water if you're involved in a water rescue your primary concerns are open the airway establish breathing circulation stabilize spinal cord injuries okay use the door slash to move if you specific the spine injury look listen and feel as for all the things we listen for breathing the patient is not breathing, you can start rescue breaths in the water. Remember, you can't do compressions in water. If the patient is experiencing cardiac arrest, quickly stabilize the patient's head and neck, remove the patient from the water, place the patient on a hard surface and begin a CPR. Treat the patient who is unconscious in the water as if he had a spinal cord injury. Okay, we always want to assume or uh, yes, assume the presence of a spinal cord injury in an unconscious patient, especially if they have numbers of tingling in their arms and legs, or unable to move the extremities, uh, pain in the neck, things like that. If they have a head injury, remember there's a good chance they have a C spine injury as well. Okay, we can always try and get them onto a board or something rigid in the water to get them out and use that as a flotation device as a means to stabilize and to remove the patient from the water. Okay, recreational divers use self-contained underwater breathing apparatus or scuba gears, um, an air tank, a regulator, mouthpiece, and a face mask. All right, diving incidents can cause trauma, near drowning, and specialized injuries. Specialized injuries associated with driving include air embolisms and decompression sickness, the bends. Both are caused when air bubbles release in the body as a result of pressure changes while diving. Okay. Always remember to maintain the ABCs, normal body temperature, administer oxygen, high flow rate. If you are trained to do so, 10 to 15 liters per minute in a non rebreather mask. Some physicians recommend placing the patient on him or her left side 
with the head slightly lowered. Patients may need to be transported to hospital with a hyperbaric chamber or a dive center with a hyperbaric chamber. Ice rescues. Um, no ice is truly safe. You don't know what's going on there. You don't have a clue as to how thick it is and can it hold your weight or why the person fell in in the first place. Visually mark the place where the patient was last seen. Basic rules of ice rescue are the same as water rescue. Reach, throw, row, or go. Reach the victim by using anything that will extend to your, to your natural reach. So a flotation, flotation device, a rope, maybe something like that. Okay. Um, reach, throw, row, and go. Row or propel a small boat to the victim to use as a toboggan. Get across the ice. If you must go, secure yourself to the shore with a rope around your waist, lie on your stomach and proceed across the ice. Always remember, try and spread your weight out as far as possible. A motor vehicle on ice presents a risky situation. Instruct the occupants to avoid unnecessary movement. If the vehicle has not gone through the ice, instruct the occupants to open the doors. If the doors cannot open, instruct the occupants to roll the windows down. Most persons on the ice and in the water and rescuers are at risk for hypothermia. Remember, keep all rescuers as warm as possible. Rescue persons should be stripped of wet clothing, dried and warmed. If the patient has no pulse, begin CPR and until continue until the patient has been transported to hospital and warmed. All right, confined spaces. Um, confined spaces are always an issue. It's difficult to work in things below ground, manholes, uh, utility vault, storage tanks, old mines, cisterns, wells, things like that. Okay, above ground level or ground level, industrial tanks, farm silage, storage silos, things like that. Elevated confined spaces, water towers, storage tanks. Okay, rescue situations involving confined spaces have two deadly hazards. Confined space may have insufficient oxygen to support life, or poisonous gases may be present. There's also a danger of collapse, and if you're working in a grain silo, there's also a danger of explosions. The dust from a grain silo is highly explosive material. Call for additional assistance. Do not enter the space until help arrives. Okay, there we go. Hmm. Farm rescue, especially, this is applicable to South Africa. We pose many challenges. Supporting of an emergency uh, may be delayed if a farm works alone. There may be a lengthy pro response time. Okay, it may be hard to pinpoint the exact location of the emergency. Poor or non-existent roads, muddy soil may require you to leave your vehicle behind and go on foot. All right, make sure you take everything you need with you. Okay, farm hazards include things like animals, wild animals, hazardous chemicals, pesticides, fertilizers, things like that, electrically powered machinery, barns and silos, as I spoke just now, um, can become very dangerous, especially silos. Okay, um, hazards uh, below grade manure storage pits, okay, in other words, underground. Uh, accidents with farm machineries, tractors that have rolled over or tipped, flipped, um, entrapped by machinery or in machinery, um, severing of body parts, sharp objects, amputations, in other words. Okay, these are all definite problems with farm rescues. Your role in a farm rescue is to stabilize the scene and provide initial medical treatment for the patient. Always remember your scene survey, your scene size up, primary survey, secondary survey, and treat for shock, maintain the patient's levels of shock if he's going into shock. Uh, seven steps, contact, uh, gain access to patient, um, provide initial emergency care, disentangle patients, prepare for patient's removal and help remove the patient. Bus rescues, yeah, oh, there's always issues with bus rescues, eh? Multiple casualty events, Definitely going to be using triage. Okay, perform a scene size up, 
call for adequate assistance, police, fire, emergency services, establish an incident command center if multiple casualties are brought. If it's a really bad bus accident, be prepared for the worst. Things like body parts and dead and dying people and things like that. It's really an eye-opener. Keep your head. Okay, help those that can be helped first. All right, there's a... Okay, set up one-way traffic pattern for responding vehicles with a large number of patients. Triage system starts. All those set up a triage center. 